This might literally be the best way to increase fat loss with exercise. And I know it's a little bit cheesy to say that, but if you're super nerdy and you're into kind of the biohacking sort of thing, then I think you'll find this very, very interesting. And it's based upon some new research on something called 1, 2, and 1, 3 di h o m e what the heck does that mean well essentially it's a diol form of a lipokine well what the heck does that mean it's something that is excreted or created a compound that is released in our body when we exercise now we've heard of things called exerkines before exerkines are again molecules that are released when we exercise but the difference between an exerkine and a lipokine is that a lipokine directly impacts how our body utilizes fat. So let's look at some newer research here real quick. There was a study published in the journal Cell Metabolism. It took a look at two different trials. Okay, they had subjects exercise on a bikergometer at like 70% of their VO2 max for 40 minutes, and then they had subjects run for 45 minutes at 75% of their VO2 max, they found that both groups ended up producing this interesting molecule, this dihome, both 1, 2, and 1, 3 forms. And they found that this actually made it so that the muscle would utilize more fat. It was making it so that the brown adipose tissue specifically, if we want to get very nuanced here, was oxidizing more fats. So it was recruiting fatty acids into the tissue and then burning them realistically kind of as heat. So part of our exercise process is actually metabolizing fat via this pathway. But the whole purpose of this video wasn't just to say that exercise is good. It was about how do we get more out of our exercise. Now, additionally, with this study, they also found that active people people that were exercising or doing aerobic work three times per week, they found that they produced more of this particular compound. But you're watching this video because you want to learn how to get more out of the exercise, not just that exercise is good for the metabolism, right? Well, we have to look at another paper. So this study was published in the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. It found that when subjects were exposed to colder temperatures, like cold exposure for 90 minutes, their brown fat actually secreted this same compound, this dihome, versions 1, 2, and 1, 3. So what does this mean? Well, it means that when we are cold, our body is also recruiting free fatty acids to metabolize, probably in an effort to create heat via brown adipose tissue. So by combining exercise and cold exposure, we can actually get more fat loss. Now, the video doesn't end here. I have some protocol that you could follow that might help you out because you don't want to just work out in the cold all the time. Now, I will say, you probably notice, like if you go out for a run and it's cold, it's weird. It's almost like the run is not necessarily harder, but you feel like you got more out of it. And if you look at the literature, like being exposed to relatively cold temperature in the mid 50 degree Fahrenheit range, that alone can increase your resting energy expenditure 15% if you are a brown adipose tissue positive person. So going out for a run in the cold could be hugely advantageous. There is a very, very, very important thing that you need to know though, and that is when you are exercising in the cold, because of the extra work your body does, a lot of times you end up more dehydrated. So before you go jump in and start doing colder exercise, you may want to consider taking in some electrolytes and keeping an eye on your hydration. I put a link to one of my sponsors down below. They're my hydration sponsor. It is a company called Element, and that link down below gets you a free variety sample pack of all their flavors with any purchase. So you try Element, 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium, all in a single sachet, super good tasting, grapefruit salt, we've got watermelon salt, you've got citrus salt, all kinds of different flavors. But then you get the variety pack that has all the different flavors that you can give to a friend or you can just be greedy and keep it all to yourself. So that link down below is drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. Okay, drinkelement.com slash Thomas. Now let's get into a little bit more protocol because if you were to just go out and run in 30 degree temperatures, it might even be too cold. 
So the literature suggests that to get this cool benefit, no pun intended, it needs to be somewhere in the ballpark of like 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. As a matter of fact, most of the literature when it has to do with brown adipose tissue to begin with, again, that is the fat that takes fuel from our body and dissipates it as heat. It's a metabolic inefficiency. Almost all of that happens in the 55 to 60 degree Fahrenheit range. A cold plunge is not going to get that for you. Let me repeat, a cold plunge is not going to do that for you. This is more about prolonged exposure. So what I would suggest you do is do three times per week exercise in a cooler environment. That's not always possible in the summertime. I understand that. So I don't expect you to do it all the time. But let's say winter rolls around, even if it's pretty darn cold out. I know there's gonna be some people watching this video are like, dude, I live in like Fargo, North Dakota, and like I'm not going out there when it's like negative 60, and I don't encourage you to do that. But try to be cognizant of training in cooler temperatures. If we're talking scientifically, like we are increasing the release of this same lipokine possibly in a double whammy effect. Exercise is going to increase this lipokine. Being active is going to increase this lipokine at baseline. And cold temperature is going to increase this lipokine. Not to mention, the more that you train in the cold, the more brown adipose tissue you create, the more brown tissue that you have, the more dihome that you produce because it seems to be produced out of brown adipose tissue. So it gets better and better with time. So exercise builds up more of this dihome release. Cold exposure builds up more potential for dihome release. Then when you combine them over time, it's like you're making yourself a potentially more active person in a shorter amount of time. So is it hard to work out in the cold? Yes, but nothing comes easy. This isn't a hack in the sense of it's a shortcut. It's the hack in a sense that it's harder, but you essentially get more metabolic benefit, just as is the case with a lot of very hard things to do. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.